Hi everyone and uh, welcome to my uh, summertime project. Um, I've had to zoom out a little bit here because the uh, box uh, which contains the Mirage uh, Polish Artillery Tractor C7P is somewhat on the large size. Uh, so let's have a look and see what's in the box. So despite the size of the kit, uh, inside there's only uh, four sprues and a clear sprue. Um, the parts aren't too bad. Um, I'd say this is probably... Um, one up for, from a basic kit um, a little bit of flash but uh, n nothing to be too concerned about the actual uh, tracks are rubber as you can see here um, never been a fan of rubber tracks uh, we've also got a tow cable there as well in rubber so those will both be replaced um, I've replaced the tracks already uh, with Master Club ones. Hate Master Club, but these were the only ones I could get. Um, so I may swap out the pins uh, for wire. I'll make a decision nearer the time. Um, the actual um, decals there. I'm doing research that there's quite a lot of scope there, so I may well do my own ones as normal. And next we have the actual instruction manual. Uh, I've had a good look through. Uh, quite comprehensive, well explained. Um, obviously everything's in Polish, uh, but it shouldn't be a problem. And then we have some uh, camouflage schemes on the back. And yes, you'll be happy to know I'm going for the middle one. That should be a lot of fun uh, with the brown, white, uh, brown, uh, with the brown, yellow, and um, green. Uh, so yeah. That, that should look nice um, now the kit comes with, with, with full interior um, however after doing a bit of research the interior um, could do with a bit of sprucing up so I had a look online and um, the manufacturer part does five photo etch uh, kits fenders two for the inside one for the outside and uh, one for the um, the uh, covers coming down over the windows um, all together came to around about 50 quid so I said no thank you and uh, I'm going to be uh, doing the uh, scratch building or the photo etch um, replacement all myself so this is going to be quite a um, project um, and like the uh, stug that I did last year uh, will take several months but um, Looking forward to, to doing the interior, should be a lot of fun, um, so uh, hopefully you'll, you'll be able to join me on this project and we'll see how we get on. So the first stage was to actually put the lower hull together, uh, went to get pr pretty well, no main issues, uh, just a bit of cleaning up as you can see with the sprue connectors. Now this kit seems to be a, an offshoot of uh, Mirage's um, small Polish tankette. Uh, so the whole size actually had to be adapted uh, for this particular build which meant uh, cutting off each each of the sides um, and then once the sides had been cut down to two sides um, it was a matter of um, cleaning up the inside um, because obviously uh, doing the, the scratch build there will be a lot of extra detail being added and you need a clean surface uh, for which to work so all the holes and, and all the extra bits were, were, were cut off and sanded back until clean and flush um, I have a large pair of uh, scissors uh, which ha has a blade on which are ideal for, for doing large straight cuts um, and it went very well indeed obviously once the fender's on we'll, we'll, we'll know for, for definite but I'm very happy with the way it turned out uh, I use humble putty uh, for doing all of my filling of holes and as you can see with the sandy sticks there that was all sanded back and ready for use and then that enabled me to put the whole of the lower hole together um, using clamps um, it was glued overnight and then in the morning I could crack on uh, with the work now the first thing was to do was to sort out the uh, front drive uh, drums uh, the kit part uh, I, I utilized um, in reality the, the kit part you can actually just turn it around so that it's more accurate uh, with the smaller part on the inside and the large part on the outside uh, what this does mean obviously is that I need to just trim that back um, so that it's flush and then what I needed to do is to make some actual drums um, because there was uh, two drums all together uh, with a separate plate in between so what I would do I'd use some plastic card 
Um, rather than going for thick plastic card, I'll go for the thinner type, cut, cut out a couple of discs, glue those together, um, and then that's a lot easier and manageable uh, to, to, to use. Um, this particular case, the uh, plastic card was 0.25. Uh, mill. I actually have a, a lot of these punches. You just need to get a hammer um, and you can just slice through the plastic card creating the disc and just sand it flush and then as I say stick them both all together and as you can see here in this photo that went uh, together particularly well and uh, once it, it's all dry um, you get a nice um, disc and all it is is a matter of um, sanding it back Try and make sure that there's plenty of glue on the sides and once dry that acts as a filler um, so you, you get a nice clean um, join um, and that in fact now is two discs put together and it looks like one solid one and as you can see with it in place it certainly looks the part so very pleased with how that went. Um, the next stage at the front uh, we have all the um, drive shaft. Um, very, not the best of conditions as you can see lots of sink marks lots of uh, seam lines um, so that needed a, a good clean up however I was pleased to use that rather than to, to actually have to scratch build that that particular part um, next what I needed to do is, is to start doing some uh, outlining on, on the floor um, all of the uh, floor um, has rivets and plates etc um, the main thing with any type of scratch build is to put the large components in place and do the detailing at the end um, but it was essential that this part was actually done first so that I would know um, what space that I had to, to utilize and it was a simple use of uh, Slater's plastic card um, all the way around and once I, the whole build's done then I'll, I'll add on the detail of the rivets uh, at that particular stage. Now these are the kit parts um, all uh, going in quite well but they, they are inaccurate um, so it, it, it was a matter of uh, just drawing around them initially so I can get the position and then that will allow me to, uh, to, to put the scratch build parts in. There was a central um, support uh, structure at the front and that again that was simply made out of plastic card. Uh, two parts, uh, two pieces uh, joined together cut to size and as you can see in this photo um, it now uh, works in well with the kit part. So with that particular section done, what we now need to do is to try and work our way uh, towards the back, uh, making sure that everything uh, fits as we go. So lo lots of dry fitting, um, lots of detail is gonna be added in here uh, with the drive shafts here. Um, the kit parts are completely wrong, um, so they would have to be uh, made, um, but it's essential to make sure that uh, they the new part will actually fit into the uh, drums that we, we made earlier and as you can see it's just a matter of test fitting uh, some styrene rod uh, to check that that worked and here what we'll have to do is to cut that out drill it through um, so the the uh, styrene rod can fit into to the kit part as well now the kit part um, needed to be updated um, very simple process cutting a bit of styrene rod off um, and we just add some discs and a bit of tubing um, now the tubing that I used um, for those of you who already scratch build you know that the styrene tubing is quite thick so it is a matter of just getting the um, file inside sanding down the, the sides and then that will enable you to uh, put it onto to the actual rod itself and that fitted quite snugly and obviously that, that would be uh, mirrored on the other side as well uh, the actual discs, they're, they're just made from uh, an eyelet maker, an essential tool, um, very useful indeed. And just put a thin piece of plastic card in there, pick the size of eyelet you want, and then you have an instant disc. So as you can see from these photos, uh, that all came out well and is coming along. Now I did have to adapt the main kit part uh, because uh, the foot plates and uh, the levers etc. are incorrect. So those have all been cut out. I don't usually super detail at this stage, but I was keen to make sure that the uh, gear box uh, was correct. So I just utilized uh, a lump of plastic and put the kit part on top. And again, that will be super detailed near the end. But I was pleased that that fitted all in place. Um, and as you can see, the left hand and the right hand sides uh, are working well together. There will be details of levers. Um, I've got to make a, another foot plate. That's all got to be put in there. 
um, but again this is all going to be done at the detailing stage really at the moment I just want to make sure everything fits correctly first now the chairs should be put up on stands as far as the kit goes but again that's incorrect uh, the seats actually sit down the two front ones um, these are the stands that are supplied and it makes it far too high um, so the two front seats are sat down but I will use the stands on, on the back ones as well um, the seats themselves are completely incorrect um, so they will have to be scratch build and, and adjusted and uh, will also um, include some detailing on the seats but that that, that will be uh, something for, for further down the line on, on one of the other videos now there's also a bulkhead screen this does not exist uh, on the original vehicle not no idea why they've included that um, so that that's going to be taken out um, again as far as the control panel goes um, I ha I'll have to try and work out how that how that will go in with all the dials if if it even exists at all so that's the front that's all come on very well um, here is the area where the engine will go looking forward to scratch building that um, but what we now need to do is to have a look at uh, putting the holes into the plastic parts to allow the engine and the other components as it, there's a couple of radiators and fans to go in there as well so that will all need to be cut out um, before we can actually do the detailing itself um, the back again uh, that will need need to be sorted out um, because we have two back grills as you can see um, but they need to be seen through so they're going to have to be cut out um, so that once the grill's on you can actually see through into the back area um, when, when cutting uh, the uh, kit sizes to, to scale try and do it on each side rather than one side otherwise you will end up with a large hole uh, files are an essential part of any scratch builder uh, you can pick up needle files and ordinary files of various sizes um, this is my own personal coll collection uh, which are utilized all the time um, in, in, in any of my builds um, and as you can see there's different uh, sizes uh, which allow you to get in, into to the smaller areas as well so try and pick some of those up as and when uh, you can because uh, that they, you will find that you will use them quite often as well as the sanding sticks another useful tool if you are going to get into scratch building uh, is a combo drill um, there are various ones on the market but this one's my favorite um, due to the fact that it has a variable adjuster uh, to allow you to, to adjust the speed um, of the rotation which is very handy indeed um, you can also have lots of different ends uh, for the different jobs that you have um, as you can see um, I can adjust the speed um, which, which is very, very important um, and all the different ends um, I've sort of collected over the years um, some are sanding some are drilling um, but yes if, if, if you're going to start um, uh, to do uh, a lot of scratch building uh, then this drill will save you a lot of time and effort so this was the kit part before I cut the, the back out and there we have the, the back now taken out all sanded back and now we're doing the central area trying to work out the the best way to cut it straight down for the engine parts and then finally to to cut across now the actual cutting across is still a bit of a gray area whether it was left open whether it was um, enclosed with, with a grill or anything I'm, I'm still researching that I personally would like to leave it open as it is now um, but we'll see how it goes next was to uh, make the uh, radiators and the fans uh, purely for size um, there's no detailing been added I just wanted to see how it all fitted together to make sure so four square of plastic card add a little bit of plastic uh, rod put it on top and there you have a very simple structure um, which will be the framework for the radiators and as you can see they've all fitted in very well indeed so I was very pleased with, with how that turned out turning to the back now um, need to take out those grills and what I'll do uh, to do that is a set of uh, hand drills uh, they're very handy uh, you can pick them up 
um, quite cheaply. Um, I have quite a lot of these sets purely and simply because they do snap, especially the smaller ones. So again, a very useful and handy tool to have. Drill out uh, holes into each of the four corners. Uh, using the drill or the blade, you can then cut out the rest of the grill. And then it's a matter of um, doing the front panel and the rear panel. And as you can see, it's all cut through now. Um, so that will just need to be detailed near the end uh, with the actual grills themselves. Moving on to the tracks. I hate Master Club tracks, but these were the only ones that were available to me. Um, they're beautifully detailed. Um, <coughs> the problem that I have with them is that they come with plastic uh, pins and plastic and metal just do not go together. So what I did uh, was to get uh, four mil wire uh, replace the uh, plastic pins with the wire um, and then that will uh, cre create a better um, working uh, link um, I try to do a, a little bit um, say 10 links um, each time I go to to the bench and that's over a period of time um, it's it soon builds up um, and before you know it you, you've actually got a whole uh, section of track um, I use a four mil uh, drill bit to uh, drill through each length uh, to make sure that the uh, wire can go in. Uh, there was a little bit of flash on them, but nothing major. It was a very uh, simple matter of sanding it down. And there we go. There's one length there. Yeah, there's lots of videos on YouTube on how to do metal tracks. So I'm sure you're fully aware that you just add a little bit of super glue on onto the end of the uh, wire. Let that dribble down. And then once all dry, you can cut the ends off, uh, get a file, sand it back, and there you have your link of track. <coughs> uh, filing back the, the ends of the wire um, enables you to create a, um, an effective looking pin. And once weathered and painted up with pigments, um, it will certainly look the real thing. So very pleased with how that's gone. The wheels, um, I'm a big fan of making sure that the wheels are roughed up. Um, you never see um, a, a, a nice brand new looking uh, tyre. So first of all, I just round off the edges because again, you never see a, a, a straight edge tyre. Uh, they're all rounded, so they're rounded off and then just get a coarser stick um, just to roughen up um, the, the edges um, and the flat part of the uh, tyre to make them look more realistic. Get hold of one of those uh, metal files that I showed you earlier um, and just make little scores, little digs in there uh, just to show some effective wear and tear. Um, on this particular model, that was enough for me, but you, you can go even deeper by using a craft knife and cutting chunks out if, if you want to go for extreme wear. But I, I was happy with, with the way that they particularly went. Now, one problem that we have with the um, uh, wheels is that... Um, they show the uh, tire on the one side uh, going up to the center, which is fine. But on the other side, there is in fact um, only a little rim, uh, but this does not appear on the kit part. So what I needed to do uh, was to create that rim, um, which means uh, putting a plate on. Again, very simply done, um, just using a 0.25 plastic card, um, getting a, another one of uh, the, the disc cutters, this one is in fact uh, 7mm um, and I just had to, to make lo loads of those and to fit it onto the central part it was just a matter of getting a 2mm uh, um, thing to cut out the hole with um, and that fitted on quite nicely and now what I have is a rim uh, to be able to paint uh, the whole tire around. So as you can see from, from this photo um, all of the detailing of the front has now been done so I, I'm now in a position where I'm happy that everything fits in as far as the main components go and now what it will be uh, is a matter of working from the back to the front and doing all the super detailing and getting all the smaller components in place um, and that will be the, the, the next stage of this project so it just leaves me to say thanks very much uh, for looking in uh, also a big thank you to all of my subscribers um, really appreciate uh, your continued support of my work um, looking forward to now progressing and doing all the super detailing 
uh, on the lower hull and hopefully I'll be able to uh, post you an updated video over the coming weeks. Happy modelling!